QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, Form 1099 and Expense by Vendor Reports. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have our open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the View dropdown, selecting the Open Windows list. We're now going to be thinking about 1099 type reports and expenses by vendor type reports, noting that these reports, like all other reports that are not the major financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss, are going to be supporting in some way activity or line items on the major financial statement reports, balance sheet, or income statement. So we will be opening up the balance sheet and the income statement and then thinking about these types of reports related to them shortly. However, let's first think about what the 1099 process is and what kind of reporting requirements are necessary for it. So the 1099 process is going to be something that possibly would be a requirement that we're going to have to send out 1099s at the end of the year. So that basically the it basically breaks down like this. Uh, if someone is not an employee, then you don't have to send them a W-2. If they were an employee, you'd have to send them a W-2 information, reporting that information to them and to the IRS. And then if they're not an employee, the IRS still wants some reporting on some individuals, those individuals typically being people that are not yet incorporated or are not incorporated. They're not big enough to be incorporated. The IRS basically thinking if they're big enough to be incorporated, then the IRS already has some good leverage on them. They could, they can. Uh, aren't, they aren't too worried about tracking them, but if they're going to be smaller, if they're sole proprietorships, then they're less likely to, to be able to track the income to them. So the IRS wants more information about that. They want you to send, we want, they want us, the business owner, to send the IRS information about the income that's going to this contractor so the IRS can follow up on that. The IRS has leverage on us to do that because we're the one that wants the deduction. We want to deduct on the taxes the expenses related to this payments we made to contractors and the irs says well if you want that deduction you need to tell us who you paid so we can make sure that they are reporting on their side so we're collecting the taxes from them so that's going to base that's basically the idea of it so that means that basically we're looking at payments we're looking at kind of cash payment type of reports uh that that we want to look into now to set this up you can set this up in QuickBooks and if you have everything set up properly beforehand then QuickBooks has a nice report that you can print out and use however if you don't have it set up yet and you're kind of questioning whether or not you owe someone a 1099 then that can kind of be an issue at the end of the time period and you got to figure out which vendors might be subject to a 1099 so here's how you would basically set it up if you go to the edit drop down if you go to preferences we'll talk we'll, we'll talk about both of those issues if you don't have it set up and you're trying to figure it out like then we'll talk about that. We're going to go to edit preferences. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom with the scroll bar, you see the tax 1099 tab. If we go to company and preferences, then we have turn on the 1099 information here. That's going to, and, and this would basically be on by default because even if you don't have any contractors that you would 1099, it doesn't really hurt uh, to have it on. So you would think that uh, this would basically be on all the time. So if you want to map your account to boxes on the 1099 miscellaneous, we can click here. So typically you would, you would be mapping it to a specific location. It usually would be 1099 miscellaneous. This can help you to kind of to, to map it out so that you can say which box it would show up on on the actual 1099 form. This item will actually help you to go through the process of setting up your 1099s and printing them if you're going to be printing them out of QuickBooks, although you still need the pre-printed uh, 1099 form so you might use QuickBooks to know who to 1099 and then fill them out or you might use QuickBooks to print on the pre pre print the pre formatted 1099 form so if you're ready to prepare your 1099s including mapping accounts you can click here so we'll get back to these options in a second right now just note that we have the 1099 miscellaneous on so then you're going to close this back out now, if you want to think about which which uh, vendors you need to 1099, you got to kind of figure that out before you do the mapping uh, process. So you could do that by going to the vendors center. You can go to the vendor center here, and then your vendors are on the left hand side. So you could just kind of go through these vendors and figure out which ones you might need to 1099. So typically, if it was a large company like like Amazon, you'd say no. The you know you're not going to 1099 the, the the state Edison, which is a large company, no. Epiphone, no. But we're going to pick Epiphone to 1099 in our practice files just for practice. 
and then Fender, if, if they were 1099, you're looking for contractors that aren't incorporated. So you'd have to figure that that would be one restriction and the other would be the dollar amount. So how much did you actually pay them as to whether or not you need to issue them a 1099? Once you find the people you need to 1099, then you would go into their activity and you should be setting up in the taxes tab. You need their EIN number and then you would check off here that you would need to 1099 them. I'll uncheck it for now and I'll come back into here in a second. So you would have to you'd have to do that process now that the the identification number is usually an EIN number, which is an employer identification number. And, uh, you know, when you, when you ask somebody, if you say, hey, look, you're a contractor, I've paid you over the threshold, I need to send you a 1099. And you ask them for their their tax identification number. They may not, you know, they may not, they may say, hey, look, I don't need an EIN number because I already, um, I don't have any employees. But still, they need an, the EIN number is the number that the IRS sees them as uh, with regards to their business. If they don't have an EIN number, then they're supposed to give you your social security number, which you can also use. But uh, hopefully they got an EIN number so they don't have to give you the social security number. That's what it's that's kind of what it's for. So you'd still want an EIN number, in other words, even if you were uh, a sole proprietorship. It's the bottom line. So then we would uh, we would close let's close this back out and you would that's where you'd basically set them up now if you had set them up or even if you had not and you want to figure out a report that would tell you who you would 1099 there's a nice little 1099 report if we go to the reports drop down it's going to be under the vendors uh, the vendors and payables and then these 1099 reports we can also refine find them in the report center go into the reports drop down report center i'm gonna we want to be in the standard tab we want to be in the vendors and payables and then we're going to scroll down to the 1099 reports so scrolling down to the 1099 reports there we have it we have a summary report and then we have a detailed report we're going to start off with the summary report we're going to go ahead and run that report changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821 so we only have two months of data right now nothing is there because we have the three filters up top one is that we only have the 1099 vendors which i haven't picked any 1099 vendors the other is the 1099 accounts if we had assigned or mapped the accounts and then the third is uh, the threshold for the uh, income threshold now if you don't have your 1099 set up you can still use this report though to kind of figure out which ones you need to be setting up as a 1099 by going to uh, changing this from from only 1099s to all vendors and then i'm going to say i want all accounts and so that gives you uh, all the all the items and you and you might even say i want to ignore the income threshold and that'll give you all the so now this is a really nice report that then you can use to figure out which are which of the vendors you would need to 1099 because you have all the information you need you got the you got the name you don't know if they're incorporated or not then you from the name you'd have to say okay are they incorporated if they if yes then uh you don't need to 1099 them if no then the then you go to the threshold the income threshold are they over the income threshold if yes then you uh, need to 1099 them if no then no and so and you can use this report to kind of figure that out once figured out then you could go back to the vendor center and you can mark them off as someone you need to 1099 and or contact them for their identification number so that you have that so that you can uh, 1099 them so that's going to be that's the major process of, of you know at the end of the year you might run this report like this without the thresholds and then figure out if there's anybody in it that you didn't set up as a 1099 vendor get their get their information from them so that you can then put it in here and uh and then issue the 1099 the information you got to get the ein number that's going to be the, the major difficulty typically so then we're going to go back to the uh to the report center you can also run this by detail so if i run this detail report and i'm going to say 010121 to 022821 and then I'm going to once again unfilter these items. So I'm going to say all and all the items here. So now we've got this information and it gives us the detail. This is a, a nice report because it basically, so we have the payments that we made by vendor. Now notice it does show bills here, but it's basically showing the bills that were paid. So if I go into the, to the actual bills that are showing, it's going to show the, the bills that were actually paid. And so I'm going to close this back out. So it is kind of showing it's it's not showing something that's in 
the accounts payable that had not yet been paid, in other words. So now let's pretend we used these reports to kind of figure out who to 1099. Let's go back to the report center. If I go back to the report center and then uh, I'm going to go, I'm sorry, I go back to the vendor center, the vendor center, which you can also get to by going vendor drop down vendor center. I'm going to assume that I'm going to say what a vendor we needed to 1099 and Epiphone. So I'm going to add them to 1099, double clicking on them. I'm going to go to the tax settings. I'm going to click on the 1099 and hopefully I would need to get their EIN number. I have to call them up, get the EIN number. I would need their address as well to properly fill out the 1099 form. I'd say, okay, we can go to Fender and then I can do the same thing. And I'm going to do the same thing. I get their EIN number and I'm going to say we need to 1099 them. These are actual companies, so they wouldn't in real life need to be 1099, but we're, we're pretending they're contractors here that aren't companies. And then I would 1099 Gibson. So now if we were to go back and run the report for the summary report, I can go to the summary report over here. And now I want to turn this particular filter back on, the 1099 filter. And now, of course, these three vendors show up. So now this report works, works nicely to filter by the vendor that we selected, but we have to actually select them to be a 1099 type of vendor. And then we can use this report to then fill out our 1099s, which we would have to get the pre-printed forms. We'd have to actually get the forms and then either fill them out by hand or we can use the QuickBooks process to print them, but we would still need the pre-printed forms to do so. So let's go through that process now. If we, if we wanted to then, now that we know what we need to do, we can then say, okay, well, what if we, we use QuickBooks to print these things out? We can go to the reports, uh, edit dropdown. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to go once again, all the way down to the uh, tax 1099 company preferences. And then we have this mapping item up top to map where it should go on the 1099, which is typically to, to miscellaneous. But then we have down here, if you're ready to prepare your 1099s, including mapping uh, accounts, we have this item. So let's go click there. It'll give you our little walk through widget item so we're going to select your 1099 vendor select the vendors that receive the 1099 we already did that verify vendor information review and edit information for selected vendors that's going to be the what we need from them which will include the ein number taxpayer identification number address map your account choose which payments to report in each box on the 1099 miscellaneous where are we going to put it on the 1099 form review vendor payments select debt gift card and paymail mail transactions to exclude from 1099 miscellaneous form so if we had particular payments that we were saying hey look we got payments for these items but they're not something that we should be 1099 for because they're not basically income type of payments we would remove them confirm 1099 entries review the amounts choose a filing method we can either print 1099s and 1096 on pre-printed form the 1099 is like or 1096 is like the summary of all the 1099s that you got to give to the IRS forms uh, to file uh, file by mail or e-file 1099s electronically by the IRS using 1099 e-file service you can also print copies on plain paper so that's going to be our options so we're going to say let's get started I won't go through the whole thing but notice here we have select your 1099 vendors select the vendors that need a form 1099 miscellaneous changing the selection also changes the vendor 1099 status in your company so we then select the vendors we already selected them by going to the vendor center if there were any other ones we could select them here as well we would then continue verify your 1099 information each vendor's information is needed so we got the vendor name the, I, the id that's usually the kind of the problem area the company information so we'd have to basically add that vendor here uh first name middle last name would typically be be necessary as well if you're talking about sole proprietorship and then uh the address form uh and state and payer state uh number so i'm going to go ahead and continue and map vendor payment account you need you 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 used these quickbooks accounts to track payments to your 1099 vendor now tell quickbooks where the amounts paid from each account should appear on the form 1099 tip most companies map accounts they use to pay 1099 vendors to box 7 non-employee compensation so that's typically where it's going to go non-employee compensation when you're issuing the 1099 they're not an employee they're not issuing a 10 uh, w2 and so it's typically going to be going to a uh, a uh, box seven type of, of categorization. So I'm going to say, all right, 
continue and then it says review payments for for exclusion the iris requires you to exclude from form 1099 miscellaneous any payments you make uh, by credit card debit card gift card or paypal so if you made payments to vendors by debit card gift card or paypal click view uh, included payments so and that and that if it goes through the credit card then there's already an audit trail you know the irs has kind of an audit trail on them same with paypal paypal might uh, be be able to issue them the the 1099 themselves so you might not be required here they're saying you're not required to issue the 1099 because you might double 1099 them if you were to do so 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 you don't want to include uh, those items because they could end up again with double 1099 in the person that wouldn't be good so if you made view view included payments and edit the check number field to include appropriate notations so quickbooks can exclude these payments so we want to view included payments so i'm going to say all right view included payments for 010121 to 02282821 this would be the period that we're going to be looking at and we can we can review that information here so i'm going to go ahead close that back out and then it says click view excluded payments to verify these payments uh, have been excluded from 1099 miscellaneous so i'll view that and i don't think we have any that we excluded here from 010121 to 02282821 uh, so nothing in that section we didn't exclude any i'm going to continue and then confirm 1099 entries review this summary of vendors for whom you are creating 1099 miscellaneous and the amounts being reported for calendar year shown double click any amounts to review transactions so here's going to be the the totals here where they're reporting it for the prior year and we don't have any data for that year so <laughs> it's, it's blank right now because this would be done of, of course at the end of the year and we enter data for the first two months of 2021 but then it would say choose a filing method print print 1099s and 1096 on pre-printed forms and mail to the irs so that would be pre-printed forms or forms are, desi are are designed specifically for quickbooks and print your data directly from quickbooks on the correct section of each form so e-file you can also is e-filing right for you the irs requires you to e-file if you submit over 250 forms uh, you can print copies for vendors and yourself on plain paper so if you have a lot of forms when you e-file, the IRS doesn't require a 1096 summary form. If your state participates in the uh, combined federal state e-filing program, uh, e-filing your federal 1099s can simplify your state filing. So with Intuit, the electro electronically with the IRS through uh, Intuit, fees will apply. And then uh, with tax 1099 file, IRS using 1099 e-file service again fees will apply in that in that instance so we're going to close that back out so that's kind of the the 1099 type process so I'm going to close this back out close this back out and close this back out let's expand this I'm going to open up the balance sheet and then the income statement just to kind of analyze this from a bookkeeping standpoint if we go to the reports drop down company and financial balance sheet standard i'm going to change the dates in the customized field from 010121 to 022821 and then run that report so here's our balance sheet now notice what we're basically doing when we do the 1099s is we're looking for the decrease in the checking account so the reports we ran are basically kind of the decreases to the checking account and just to just to show that to show that they're supplemental to basically the balance sheet and income statement uh, we're going to double click on the checking account and then if I was to run, here's what we're going to run it for. Now, everything is in here, including increases and decreases. So if you ran this report for the decreases, you're basically coming up to the building blocks of what, what QuickBooks did when they filtered out the reports for like a 1099 type of report, which means you would go to the customize up top and you could go to filters. And I'm going to scroll all the way down just to practice our filters and go to transaction type. And then I would like to filter by, by checks, everything that's a kind of a check type form. I want to have more than one filter so i'm going to say multiple transaction filters and then i'm going to look for everything that's basically a check form so a check and that's the form we use for checks and any other kind of decreases deposit that's an increase invoice no sales receipt payment that's going to be kind of like a, a decrease and then we have credit card no bill payment no bill payment that's going to be a decrease sales tax payment that's going to be a decrease that's like a check 
to QuickBooks and then you have a paycheck that's like a check paycheck uh, payroll liability check like a check and that's good so I'm gonna say that's him so I'm gonna say okay and then say okay and then we kind of filtered this down to basically the decreases during that time period uh, in in the the checking account that's basically what we're doing that's basically what QuickBooks is doing and then they would sort it by vendor so if you were to do this from scratch then of course you can sort this by the name you could possibly export it to excel and then sort it by the name and then you can come up with similar reports that we that they came up with with regards to the 1099 reports so similar kind of in just to show you that it's it's tying out to what we're doing here now also note that you might think on the on the income statement if i hit the reports drop down company and financial look at the profit and loss report changing the dates up top from 010121 to 0228 to one you might be thinking that you know those payments are really kind of expense accounts they should line up to the expense accounts down here as well uh, and eventually the payments typically if they're going to a vendor will wind up on the expense accounts somewhere uh, but there could be a timing difference as to when that would happen so the question is are we doing decreases to the checking account payments or are we doing expenses just to see that let's go to the home page and say when we enter a bill for example like to the telephone company that would be recording an expense and a payable even though cash had not been paid yet uh, we have an expense at that time then we would pay it with in essence a check a bill payment type check which would decrease the checking account at that at that point in time so we have a timing difference as to when the payment goes out and when the bill uh, was recorded in terms of an expense or we can pay the check directly and simply pay the check down here and that would be recorded uh, at the same point in time so let, let's think about the the profit and loss type of things type of things then and say well could we run a similar report rather than like the cash that is going to be decreased by vendor could we run a report that's going to be showing the expenses by vendor so that's another a little bit different of a report because now we're looking at the expenses by vendor as opposed to when the actual payments happen which is what we're looking for with a 1099 so to do that let's go to the reports drop down vendors and payables and we can look at the uh the ex well let's actually company and preferences and then we want to look at the expenses by vendor type of reports and compare that compare those out you can also find that reports drop down report center and then we can maximize this window standard tab company and financials is where we want to be scrolling down to our our uh, expenses by vendor here's our summary report so if i was to say run that report i'm going to say this is going to be from 010121 to 022821 now notice we don't have a lot of activity here and you might say well that you know that doesn't really tie out to the the profit and loss report so the profit and loss report has more expense accounts here so if i was to see these side by side just let's just see if i can minimize this i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this over so we can see these two side by side here i'm gonna make this pull this down so there's our expenses by vendor and then on this side we'll pull this over this is our profit and loss which shows the total expenses now if we look at the expenses on the on the profit and loss not all of them will like why would it why would the expense be over here and they wouldn't be over here notice the banking expenses over here it's not on this side why now this is important because you you, you could enter transactions without entering a vendor and sometimes that doesn't really matter and sometimes it could it could be a problem so especially when you get the bank feeds if you're getting bank feeds from the checking account and you're not entering the vendors then you're going to lose a lot of the data you won't be able to basically sort your expenses by vendors because your vendors won't won't be in the system all you'll have are the accounts and so you want to make sure that you're including the vendors so you don't have this kind of thing happening in other words if i was to look up this transaction this banking transaction double click on the banking transaction here's the check there's no there's no vendor <laughs> that's going to and again a lot of times the bank feeds sometimes you don't enter you just, you just don't enter a vendor because you're kind of lazy not to enter the vendor this is obviously a bank fee charge it was on the bank statement when we did the bank reconciliation we saw it might not be a problem but if we do that for people that that we're actually going to be uh 
like like our major vendors then it's going to it's going to restrict how we can sort our data so this one notice depreciation down here these are non expense type of items so they're not going to be over here on the expense report either because they're accrual transactions if i double click on them it was made with a journal entry there's no cash involved with depreciation because it's depreciation on property plant and equipment and so then if i take a look at insurance that's not over here why because it's going to be a journal entry because we put it into prepaid insurance first and then we expensed it with a journal entry and then we have the uh the internet expense so that one we actually paid a bill for and we have the vendor for spectrum so we have spectrum here we have the, the miscellaneous uh other account notice once again miscellaneous no there's no vendor <laughs> why because that that one happened to be something that we're, we're saying that the comp the owner took money out of the company but then it's just another example that we can decrease the checking account without a vendor and if, if you do that all the time you're going to lose information on how you can sort your checks again if you're using bank feeds it's quite common that people do that <laughs> and they and you lose you lose information office supplies so that that's going to be office supplies staples here so we had a vendor so we have staples on on this side payroll uh payroll wouldn't be it's an expense but payroll wouldn't be a vendor over here because they're employees so they're not going to be sorted by vendor and then the uh payroll expense telephone of course would be vendors uh, on verizon so there's verizon and then utilities would be here and that's edison and that would be edison so just to note, there's a kind of a difference between a 1099 report or, or a report that would be cash basis report, trying to look in at the balance sheet accounts of cash that decreases to cash that you might want to look into and you might want to sort those by vendor. And then you might have reports related to the expenses by vendor reporting on the income statement by vendor. But that's a little bit more confusing of a report because you can have a cruel kind of activity uh, on, on the profit and loss when you look at those expenses, number one and number two. You may not have added the vendors. Uh, the vendors might not always have been added, and the vendors aren't aren't added. Um, that could limit your sorting capability because you want to be able to sort by vendor if you, if you want to drill back down on some transaction detail.